Hey everybody and welcome to Blender. In this video we're going to take a quick look at the interface and how to navigate around it. Before I get started, a huge thank you to my members and patrons. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen. And of course, thank you to everybody else for subscribing and hitting that notification icon. That really helps me out. If you are interested in supporting the channel, feel free to visit the Patreon in the description below. Or you can simply join the channel by hitting the join button next to the subscribe button. So let's jump into this then. If you've just downloaded Blender, the first thing that you're going to see when you load it up is this. This is the 3D viewport and this is where we're going to be doing the majority of our work. In the top right hand corner of this viewport you can see this little gizmo and if you click on it and drag it around you can rotate your view around the object that you're looking at. You can also achieve the same thing by holding down the middle mouse button like so. You can also hold down the shift and then the middle mouse button to pan your view like so. And then if you hold down control and click the middle mouse button, you can zoom in and out. If you right click in the screen, you will bring up a context menu which changes dependent on what you're doing. And of course, this will be immensely useful throughout using Blender. In the top left hand side of the screen, you can see that we have our major menus. If you click on those, you get different selections inside those to make. And this entirely depends on what mode you are in as to what you can do. You have different modes. You have object mode, which is working with entire objects. You have edit mode, which allows you to edit specific objects sculpting mode which has a similar feel to zbrush and then your paint modes which allow you to paint your objects these menus will all change depending on which mode you go into so as you can see we've gone into edit mode and our options have changed and if we go back to object mode they pop back to the original options in the top right hand corner of the screen you'll have what is called the outliner that's this thing up here and this shows you absolutely everything within your scene. Everything is grouped within collections and you can kind of think of collections as groups in Dash Studio. Although the beauty of using collections is that you can have an object assigned to multiple collections, which obviously allows you to have a more diverse selection of options that you can do with it. And if you really want to, you can right click and you can actually change the color of each collection just to make each one appear slightly different. On the bottom right hand side of the screen you can see our properties panel and this is a dynamic menu that's going to change dependent on what you have selected and what scene you're in and it's really useful to be able to change things like the dimensions, the camera angles and pretty much everything to do with the objects you're working on will appear in this. You can also adjust the size of this screen and all the other screens just by simply clicking on the edge of them. So you can adjust how much real estate you've got for each part of your editing environment. The top of our interface is split up into three sections. In the top left you have your standard file menu top bar system which has your windows, your render, edit and file selections. Then you have your workspace tab. So if you're wanting to do different things, you can click on a different layout and it will give you a workspace dedicated or rather optimized for that specific type of activity. And then in the top right, you have your scene and view layer tabs, which allow you to change what objects you are looking at. You can simply choose which layer you want to view or you can view an entire scene. And finally, at the very bottom of the screen, we have our timeline or our playback interface. You can drag this up and this allows you to move through an animation like this, or you can just simply hit the plus button and it will play through it automatically. This interface can seem like it's got a lot going on and it really has. It does seem to rather be the way with 3D software these days. There's just so many different options that it can be overwhelming but understanding where the basics are is really important for being able to use the software further down the line. 
Thanks very much for watching this video guys. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you in the next video. But until then, you take good care of yourselves guys, okay? Bye bye.